Today's episode of Mike's Heart Reviews is going to be a little bit different than the others because we're not going to make a single serving cocktail. We're not going to do it in a single part. Most importantly, we're making sangria, a wine drink for day 16 of 25 drinks of Christmas. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo area. And today I am making some apple wine sangria. Yes. The sangria is a Spanish wine cocktail of sorts. It essentially involves the uh, combination of a semi-sweet, uh, red Spanish wine, something along the lines of like a tempranillo. Either way, we're going to take that and sort of turn it into an affectation that carries Christmas spice and apple and citrus flavors so that you can have something to serve at your Christmas party this season. And with everything you see in front of you, uh, I have two honey crisp apples, one whole lemon, some cinnamon sticks, ground nutmeg, whole clove, and this bottle here is a Riesling. This is German Riesling from 2021, uh, Rheinheisen. And I bought it because the bottle is adorable. Uh, I also, I have a cat, so I saw this and I thought, man, they totally bought, they totally made that for people like me. I've been excited to try it and I was saving it for this moment, so we'll go ahead and put this all together and see what we can do. I'm gonna start by taking these two apples, these are honey crisps, and we're just gonna kind of cut off their edges so we can dice them up into thin pieces. Now in this case, the thinner the better because you wanna create as much surface area between the pieces of apple and the wine uh, for it to infuse and pull that flavor out of the apples. We'll throw those directly into the bottom here. Now this is the most time intensive part of this process and that's the thing about sangria. It's not something you could just make and then serve right away. It's something that has to sit ideally in the fridge uh, for at least 24 or 48 hours because as time goes on, like a mulled wine, this will advance in flavor and will pull more character out of the apples and, and, and infuse with the spices that we're gonna add. It will be better the longer you let it sit. So I encourage all of you to do just that. And whenever you have, you know, if you have like a day before you go into a Christmas party, you're not doing anything, you know, you got time. Go ahead and make this a day in advance. You'll stun everybody at that part. And now we're gonna take a step back from that and do our spice components. You're gonna need two cinnamon sticks and you're gonna wanna crack these in half. That'll create some additional surface area off of which the wine can infuse. What we're trying to do basically is replicate the essence of a mold hot wine into a cold wine. Uh, through this fashion of steeping a sangria rather than cooking uh, something like a, oh, a, a wassail. Next up, I'm gonna take some uh, ground nutmeg. I'm just gonna sprinkle this in here. You don't need a ton of it, but I wanna get some of that component in there. And because I don't have whole nutmeg and you have to kind of grate whole nutmeg anyway, ground will work just fine. For our clove component, which is the last of the spices, you want six to eight cloves. Now clove can be very strong. You don't wanna go too crazy on it. We're also gonna take this lemon here before we go back to that second apple and take this lemon here. And we're going to cut this up into small half wedges and throw them straight in, pith and all. This is gonna give us some acidity, some flavor, uh, some citric notes that'll keep things nice and light and complement the nature of our white wine. We're switching into a white wine here because it'll better carry the flavors of the apple and will complement the lemon. The spices will be able to show up a little bit more without relying so much on having to be cooked to show up in you know great, great power in the wine. We're gonna take our last apple here. We're just gonna do the same thing we did the first. Just chop that up as fine as possible. Now that statement, apple wine sangria, makes it sound like we're using an apple wine in this. And could you do that? Yes. However, I don't know of any apple wines that are made from apples, uh, although I'm sure Leelanau Wine Cellars does make one. They, have an, they, they do have an apple wine, actually. Um, you could use that. What I think more people will be familiar with is Barefoot Apple Moscato, which, yeah, you could work here, and that would mean you probably wouldn't have to sweeten it on the back end. But um, Barefoot is disgusting garbage wine. Why the fuck would you want to drink that? Now that we've got uh, both of our apples and our lemon and all of our spices in there, we're gonna go ahead and crack open this bottle of Riesling. Could you do a Riesling? Yep. Could you do a Moscato? Yep. Could you do uh, like a Pinot Grigio? Yep, you could do that. Any like semi-sweet, or really whatever kind of wine that you like, you can use. Um, the thing you wanna control for most is sweetness because it's better to have the opportunity to change that on your own accord rather than relying on your wine to provide it. We'll take that out and we're just gonna take this whole 750 ml and, oh, this is only 500 ml. I hope there's enough in here. <laughs>
All right, take your whole bottle of wine and you're just gonna pour that straight over. Just go ahead and glug that shit on in there. Apples and lemons all nice and covered up here. I did not realize that uh, this was only 750 mLs of wine. Sorry, it's only 500 mLs of wine. So I'm gonna have to improvise. <laughs> Fortunately for me, when I made that royal wine, uh, that, that royal syrup for the uh, uh, naughty list, I bought a four pack of Corbel champagne. And that means I have some extra white wine that I can throw in here and make this not suck. Let's <laughs> finish her off. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Some good coverage. Now, like I said before, we have to let this sit in the fridge and steep and allow the wine to sort of pull those flavors out of the apple and the lemon and the spices and kind of bring them all together. So we've got to put this in the fridge now. We're gonna cover it with some saran wrap and foil. And the next time that you see me carry this jug in, it will be 24 to 48 hours later when it is best ready to serve. And we will give it a taste. And we're back. You can tell we're back because I'm wearing a different shirt and certainly because nothing else has changed about this set at all. I haven't realigned the camera. I haven't restocked the bar. I haven't done anything else. I promise. <laughs> it's 24 hours later. We're gonna go ahead and crack this sort of makeshift lid off of our wine. I'm gonna start by giving it just a quick smell to see what it's done. Ooh, <laughs> that's nice. The, the way that eggnog smells, that kind of spicy note you get, is nutmeg. And I'm getting that here alongside bright, fresh citrus and apple notes. Ooh. Ooh, that is good. I don't have a wine glass. I broke, I broke all my wine glasses, so I'm just gonna improvise and throw some of this into a mug here. We're gonna give it a taste. Give it a taste. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's good. It's almost like a weird artisanal lemonade. It's got this kind of tart, uh, bright wine citrus flavor, like that kind of uh, tartness you get from like some white wines, like the Riesling we used and the, and actually the Prosecco we used. It's just, it's carrying like the, the lemon and the, the tartness of the apple really well. You definitely get the impact of the spices there, almost in a way that makes them, some, for some reason reminds me of rum in a way that reminds me of rum. I don't know what it is about that. And lighter than a normal mulled wine, and like a red wine, like a red mulled wine or a sangria. It's lighter, it's got, it's got this, this sort of airy bounce to it. And it's not, it's not too tart or too sweet to drink on its own, you don't have to cut it with anything. It's really good. Well, that's that, ladies and gentlemen, today we made, over the past 24 hours, some apple wine sangria. It's tart and sweet and refreshing and delicious and still tastes like a cup of Christmas. Thank you all so much for watching day 16 of 25 Drinks of Christmas. I'll see you tomorrow with yet another episode. We're doing a fun variation on a Dirty Shirley, so I'll see you guys there. Have a good one.